And you made a very big decision personally recently to resign as a Labour councillor over Keir Starmer's position on Israel and Gaza. Just explain why you reached that decision. Yes, so James, I'm now an independent councillor here in the city of Oxford where I was born and raised. So uh, I was a Labour councillor up until last week. Um, It was a real honour for me to be elected as a Labour councillor in the city I was born and raised in where I went to school, where my family live. So this isn't a decision that I made lightly. However, I had no other choice. Um, I'm a former international aid worker for 15 years. I've worked for Oxfam, Save the Children, MSF, all around the world. I've spent all my life advocating for humanitarian aid, access into conflict zones, and also for the upholding of international law. And the leader of my party went on national radio uh, while I was at the uh, party conference in Liverpool as well uh, to say basically was implying that Israel had a right to cut off electricity, water and gas and food from the besieged population of Gaza. Now, alongside my colleague, Dr. Amal Latif, uh, we both wrote to the national and local representatives of our party here in Oxford to ask them if they could really clarify these comments. In the meantime, more and more front bench MPs were going on television and radio to say the same thing. We did not get a response um, from our leadership, and so we decided to resign with a heavy heart. Now, since then, and particularly this morning, Lisa Nandi, who's a woman I have immense respect for and is a shadow international development secretary, no less, has been on the BBC where she was asked multiple times by Victoria Derbyshire if she condemned Uh, effectively collective uh, punishment of civilians in Gaza um, and whether she was against Israel withholding those services, water, gas, electricity and food. And she couldn't give a response. I think it's absolutely incredible that almost two weeks into this horrifying conflict where Israelis are mourning their children and the people that have been killed in terrorist attacks by Hamas and indeed waiting for their hostages to be returned and increasing civilians, numbers of civilians are dying in Gaza, that this is the sort of line that's coming from potentially our next future government and our government's doing no better. Meanwhile, in Israel, where people are mourning and where they are scared and where they are trying to hide from Hamas rockets, there's more call for peace. There is more call for, uh, you know, justice for Israelis and Palestinians. And for those of us who don't live in the, in Israel or Palestine, for those of us who are outside of that context, we need to be really aware of what we're saying and what we're doing. So I, in good consciousness, could no longer stay as a representative of the Labour Party. And I had no choice. I hear what you say about Lisa and Andy's comments this morning, but on Keir Starmer, it does seem as if his his tone and his wording has, has subtly shifted over the past week or so. And I appreciate these comments he made at, at PMQs that I'm about to quote earlier this week were made after you had resigned. But he said this week that we must strive to speak with one voice in condemnation of terror, in support of Israel's right to self-defence and for the dignity of all human life that cannot be protected without humanitarian access to those suffering in Gaza and the constant maintenance of the rule of international law. Is there anything in that, Shyster, that you disagree with? I'll tell you what I disagree with, James. I disagree with the British government and the opposition still being unable to call for an immediate ceasefire, an immediate end to all violence in Israel and in Gaza. I'm sorry, but if these... If the if the leader of the opposition and the prime minister want us to believe that they believe in peace, then that's the very first thing they need to do. Rishi Sunak was in Israel talking about police, uh, talking about peace. His government vetoed a ceasefire a few days before he arrived there. This is performative politics. The stakes are very high. We are also seeing a lot of scared Jewish people here in the UK, a lot of scared people from the Muslim community who are very fearful of what is going on in Israel and Palestine and the impact it's having on our communities. So you can say you believe in humanitarian access, but if as the leader of the opposition, and the Prime Minister, you are not calling for an immediate ceasefire. You are not calling for the end of lethal Israeli military disproportionate force being rained down on the people of Gaza. Then your words ring hollow and they really don't mean anything. Now, for those international aid workers who are in Gaza, I have worked in conflicts. I know how challenging that work is. My heart goes out to them. But what I'm seeing currently in the UK is absolutely abysmal. It is it is horrific, the rhetoric that coming from the government and also from the Labour Party. And I just want to end on this one point, James. Keir Starmer also said that there was disarray amongst some Muslim communities. This is a very divisive comment coming from Keir Starmer. It is not 
Muslims alone who are horrified by the mounting death toll in Gaza. It is all decent minded people, which is why we've seen thousands and thousands of people on the streets in London and other cities across the UK and Europe. Israel and Palestine is not a Jewish or, or a Muslim issue. It's a human rights and a, and a humanitarian issue, which sadly disproportionately impacts Jewish people and Muslim people who are also fearful of the implications of what's happening over there and how it's impacting our communities. And we need our politicians to frankly do much better than they currently are.